father saw that boy coming, he ran to where he was. The Bible says that our Savior, the Lord Jesus, in Hebrews chapter 2, because he hath suffered being tempted, he is able also to succor them that are tempted. The word succor is an old English word that means to run to something to bring aid or relief to it. God ain't never run from anything in his eternality. But he has run to some things. Amen. I'm so glad he runs to where we are. Yes, and he helps us this morning. Well, I want you to take your Bibles and go with me to the book of Genesis. Go to the book of Genesis in chapter number 45 this morning. The book of Genesis in chapter number 45 is where we'll begin at. Uh, hopefully that's where we're going to end at. And... Uh, you say, hopefully, well, it just ain't never no telling when I start preaching where we might wind up at, praise God. I hope we'll get back to where I was planning on going, but you know how that goes from time to time. Genesis chapter number 45 this morning. I love the life of the man that I'm preaching from this morning, the life of Joseph. I love Joseph's life uh, for one really basic reason, not, not just because of all the things that he went through and how he survived and he, he came out for the better and not for the worse. Those, those are wonderful things and wonderful stories and we get help from that stuff. But the main reason I love the life of Joseph is I believe uh, the same reason why God really thought a lot about the life of Joseph and why he soaks up much of the book uh, of Genesis from chapter 37 all the way to chapter 50. Uh, it's just all about the life of Joseph. More than God talking about the sun, the moon, and the stars being created. More than God speaking about the first man and the first woman being made. More than God speaking about a worldwide flood. More than God talking about even the father of faith named Abraham, God carves off a large spot of the first book of your Bible, chapter 37 to chapter 50, and he highlights the life of Joseph. You say, why? And I've told you this before. We've studied it before. It is because the life of Joseph mirrors that of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joseph is an Old Testament picture and foreshadow of the Savior, the Lord Jesus, that would come to redeem you and I from the curse of sin this morning. That's the angle that I want to come at Joseph's story from this morning. Looking at it from that angle, I want us to look farther than just seeing Joseph. Please, to goodness, tell me, while you read this story with me, you're not just seeing a little Jew boy named Joseph that lived thousands of years ago and died. I hope when you read this story with me this morning, you see Jesus like I saw Jesus. I hope when you read the life of this man, you are seeing pictures of Jesus. You read and say, man, that's like what Jesus yeah. did in the New Testament. That's a picture of what Jesus did for us. This morning, I would like for you to see Joseph out of the, or Jesus out of the life of Joseph, we were good. Chapter 45, verse 1 is where we'll begin reading. We'll read the first six or seven verses here as the Lord gives us utterance. Verse 1, then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. You know what's happening here? Joseph has been alienated, estranged from these brothers of his. Now for, for around 20 years or so, Joseph has been estranged from them. You remember the story. He told them his dream back in chapter 37. They didn't like the dream that he told them. Because he said one day they would bow down to him. And so they said, let's just get rid of him. We don't want to hear his word anymore from God. We don't want to hear about his dream. Let's just get rid of him. We'll sell him. And we'll let the Egyptians do with him what they will. They have now been separated for these 20 years. But now they are coming back into contact. Joseph is revealing his true identity unto them. Verse 2. Verse 2. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, watch the next three words, I 
am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not angry, uh, grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and there are, uh, yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. One more verse, verse 8. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. Aren't you glad God had a plan? Aren't you glad before his brothers ever messed things up? God already had a plan. Can I pause and say, aren't you glad that before Adam and Eve ever messed up in the garden, God already had a plan. Aren't you glad before Eve ever decided to fall for the trick of the devil and eat of that fruit, before Adam ever dove off into sin with her, before the devil ever deceived them both into plunging humanity into a world of death and discouragement and depravity and sin, I'm glad that God already had a plan. God ain't never been called flat-footed. God ain't never been caught without a plan this morning. Somebody said, has it ever occurred to you that nothing has ever occurred to God? God ain't never just been walking around and saying, hmm, ain't never thought about that before. I'm glad God knows this morning. It said it was not you to send me hither, but God and he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and a lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Man, as I read these verses and I think about Joseph's life, all I see is Jesus. I see Joseph. I see Jesus. I think about Joseph. I think about Jesus. I read about Joseph. It makes me want to read about Jesus. I mean, it's see Joseph and it's Jesus over and over again. This morning, uh, we find that Joseph pictures the life of Jesus in that he came to his own and his own received him not. Come to his brethren and his own brethren didn't want nothing to do with him. Jesus come to the Jew and they persecuted him and they hated him. And then you know what they did? They done the same thing that his brothers did to him. These brothers sold him for money to the hands of a foreign country. We find that the Jews uh, up through Judas sold him. They sold Jesus out. Delivered him unto the country of the Romans uh, and wanted him dead. Uh, we find they take Joseph into Egypt. He gets lied on, mistreated. We find they take Joseph, uh, Jesus to Potiphar's jud or Pilate's yeah. judgment hall and they lie on Jesus and they mistreat him. Then they took Joseph and they put him down in a dark prison. Yes, and brother, they took Jesus and they took his life and he went down into the prison yes, of death this morning. Yes, but just like yes, the prison couldn't hold Joseph, how yes, glad the grave couldn't hold Jesus. Yes, and he come up with yes, death, hell, and the grave, yes, the keys in his hand that victory this morning. And the Bible said that old Joseph ended up ascending to the throne. Thank God the Bible said God had highly exalted yeah. Jesus and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess yeah. Yeah. that he's Lord to glory to the glory of God the Father. We found they bow the knee to him. One day this world will bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. We find that Joseph yeah. Mary a Gentile bride. He takes a wife from Egypt while he was in that country. Aren't you glad while Jesus is working in this world today through the person of the Holy Ghost, he's calling out a Gentile bride out of this world, seeking and saving that which was lost today. I'm telling you, every time I see Joseph, I see Jesus this morning. What I really want to show you is this. I'm going to give it to you and be done. I'm interested how the Bible said in verse 3, Joseph looked unto his brethren, revealed himself to his brethren, and he said this, I am Joseph. And what, in, what, what really kind of caught my mind is how did these estranged, alienated brothers get the opportunity to meet this wonderful man named Joseph again? Fellowship was severed. Relationship was severed. 
They were away from each other for all these years, giving no thought to Joseph whatsoever. Then all of a sudden, God brings him back into their life. So I want to look at the life of Joseph and how he meets back up with his brothers. And I want to preach on this thought this morning for a few minutes. How to meet Jesus. Just like they, were, they met Joseph. And we're going to look at how they met Joseph. I want to preach to you on how to meet Jesus. You say, brother, I know about Jesus. These boys knew about Joseph. But they hadn't met Joseph. They'd been alienated from Joseph. But thank God the Lord brought them back into fellowship and reconciliation. Do you realize that's what I'm trying to do this morning? Brother, way back yonder in the Garden of Eden, man was separated from God's fellowship and separated from God's friendship. But God came in the robe of flesh up through Jesus. Jesus Christ our Lord and he grabbed the hand of God and he reached down and grabs the hand of sinful man and he reconciles us back to himself through his son. I'm glad there was a day I met Jesus. I'm not talking about there was a day when I just knew about Jesus. I'm sure everybody in here knows about Jesus. They know there was a man named Jesus. They know he's talked about in the Bible. They know there's a lot of Christians that like him. They know he died on a cross and a bunch of people say he rose from the dead. But knowing about him ain't the same as knowing him this morning. Knowing about him ain't the same as him being your Lord and your Savior and your Master and your Redeemer this morning. I'm glad the Bible said when he came to his own, his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Uh, even the, I like this. Joseph's brethren wouldn't receive him at first. So you know who did receive Receive him, them Gentile Egyptians received him and took him in. Thank God them Jews didn't want Jesus, but us old Gentiles, aliens from the Commonwealth of Israel, having no hope and without God in the world. I saw him for who he was one day, the Savior of the world, the substitution for my sin, and I gladly repented and received him as my personal Savior this morning. Amen. Oh, there's all kind of people know about Jesus. There's all kind of people invoke the name of Jesus. But I'm talking about have you ever met Jesus? I mean through the eyes of faith have you ever received him and known him personally? See, I, it was interesting. Like I say, I see Joseph, I see Jesus. Here in the text, Joseph revealed himself to these boys and said, I am Joseph. I was reading just this morning Acts chapter number 9. And Acts chapter number 9 is when the Apostle Paul got saved. And you know what Jesus told Paul when he shows up to Paul? Paul knew about Jesus, but he didn't know Jesus. You know what Jesus told Paul when he showed up? Paul said, Who art thou, Lord? And Jesus said, the same thing Joseph said. Joseph said, I am Joseph. And Jesus said, I am Jesus. Whom thou persecutest. I'm fixing to reconcile you to myself. I've come so that we might meet this morning. And I hope before you leave this place, you come to meet the Jesus that I know and love this morning. Amen. Say, preacher, I'd like to meet Jesus. I'd like to know that peace in my heart. I'd like to know where I'm going when I'm dying. I'd like to have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. How can I meet Jesus? We're going to look at these boys' life and how they met Joseph. Can I say number one this morning? If you're going to meet Jesus, you've got to be hungry. Can I say it in South Georgia, where I come from? Can I say it in South Georgia dialect? If you're going to meet Jesus, you've got to be hungry. I found out hungry and hungry is two different things. If you don't meet Jesus, you got to be hungry to meet him this morning. You know how they met, Brother Skip, there's a blessing to me. Y'all know how they met this morning, how they got back together? Yeah, yeah. God sent a famine yep. in the land. Amen. God made them hungry yes, this sir. morning. They was living down there in the land uh, where their fathers Abraham and Isaac had lived. And the Bible said that famine come through. And Brother Butch, they didn't have none to eat. I mean, they down there hungry and they starving. And somebody come by. And this yeah. is what they said. Yes, they said, there's somebody in Egypt that's got bread. Yes, yes. Down yonder in Egypt is bread. You know who that somebody was? It was Joseph. 
the Bible said that God brought him there for a great deliverance. That's what God brought Jesus down to this earth for. God took Joseph. I like what it said over there in Genesis 37. It said they took Joseph down into Egypt. See, Joseph left the holy land, the holy land up there in Israel, and he went down into that wicked land of Egypt. You know why he went from up yonder to down there? To bring deliverance. Do you know why God, do you know why God took Jesus from the holy land of heaven? Except Joseph. Joseph had the bread. You know what that Bible said in John chapter number 6, I believe it was? Jesus said, if any man hunger, let him come to me. He said, I am the bread of life this morning. You know how to meet Jesus? You got to get hungry for the right thing this morning. You know why some of y'all don't want to meet Jesus? You ain't hungry yet. Oh no, you're still like the prodigal son. You're filling your belly with the swine food. You're laid up like the Bible said in Luke to, uh, chapter 15 about that prodigal son. You're eating what the swine eat down there. The Bible said he fain would fill his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. Some of y'all in here this morning, you filling your belly on every worldly pleasure this world's got to offer. You filling your belly on every sensual desire that your mind can possibly think of. You are grabbing everything this world's trying to give you. You know why you're doing that? Because you're spiritually hungry and you're trying to fill the void down inside that nothing can fill but the Lord Jesus himself. Men will grab alcohol to try and feel the spiritual hunger in their life. Men will grab religion and join a church and be baptized and get sprinkled and confirmed to try and fill the hole that they need in their life. They'll reach out and they'll grab sex and they'll grab a relationship and they'll get a job and they'll get education and they'll reach for money and they'll reach for drugs and they'll reach for power and they'll reach for entertainment and they'll reach for music and they'll reach for sports and they'll reach for popularity. But you hear me this morning... There ain't nothing can satisfy the hunger in a man's soul like Jesus can. The Bible said that he satisfieth the longing soul and he filleth the hungry soul with goodness this morning. You know what made a difference in my life? What made a difference in my life was one day I got hungry for the Jesus that I had heard preached about. I got hungry for the Jesus that mama had told me about. I got hungry for the Jesus that daddy was living for. And that day, uh, brother, when I come to an altar, I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was dissatisfied with what the world had to offer. And if you go to meet Jesus, you got to get hungry for him this morning. That's the problem. Ain't enough people getting hungry. Coming here this morning, and you know what we've done? We've allowed people to feel good right where they are. Oh no, you are spiritually starving. I mean, if we can see your spiritual man, the Bible said you are dead in trespassing sin, starved to death. You're trying to resurrect a dead man by feeding him the things of this world. But you can't resurrect a dead man by feeding him the things of this world. He's got to get spiritual bread to be resurrected. He's, hallelujah. He's got to get spiritual water, Brother Zeke, to get resurrected. And thank God one day by faith, when I trusted Jesus Christ, God gave me spiritual bread. God gave me spiritual water. And it resurrected my dead spiritual body this morning. You got to get hungry. I mean, are you hungry for Jesus this morning? Have you ever got hungry to say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good? Amen. Boy, if I could give you a taste, I'd give you a taste this morning. And some of y'all sitting in here and listening to me preach, and it ain't doing a thing for you this morning. You hoping I'll shut up here in just a minute so you can get out of here. You wasn't hungry for it when you come in, and you ain't hungry yet. I wish I could create a hunger in you. Yeah. You know what I found out? I can't make people hungry. I can tell you about how good he is, but I can't make you hungry. I can offer him to you, but I can't make him hungry, make you hungry this morning. 
You say, who's got to make me hungry? You got to realize that you're starving to death. And it's God that makes a man hungry this morning. That draws and woos into yourself. And if you walk in and you feel hungry for God, you in the right place. We're offering the right Savior. You can come and get full this morning. I'm glad when you meet Jesus and you get that bread. You don't just get halfway filled. You don't walk away saying, man, I'd like to have something else. man. I'd like Jesus plus something. Oh, no. Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. He will satisfy your soul this morning. How do you meet Jesus? You got to get hungry. Same way they did. When they got hungry, they went looking. But you know where they went looking? They went looking where they said there was bread at. See, some of y'all's hungry and you're running to everything trying to fill it. There ain't no bread out in that world. This world don't got no bread to satisfy a spiritually hungry soul. It don't got bread for it. It will leave you empty this morning. It will leave you hungry this morning. Oh, but if you'll get a hold of Jesus Christ, if you'll meet Jesus Christ, He offers bread that the world don't have. He offers meat to eat that you know not of. He gives you something the world can't give. I mean, brother, look at here. What in the world is it that would take men that sit in this church this morning that they used to couldn't even get through out a day? They used to couldn't get through a weekend without filling up their belly with some rock fire, rock gut liquor. I mean, without sucking down some beer and some Jack Daniels. What is it about some of y'all? You couldn't make it through your month without sticking something in your veins or snorting something up your nose. What is it about some of you? You was never satisfied with just one woman or with just one man, but you had to have another one and another one and another one because that one didn't satisfy and this one didn't satisfy. What is it, though, that now has changed your life, put you on a church pew, put a Bible in your hand, put a new song in your mouth? I'll tell you what it was. You met somebody that satisfies what all that could. you got to get hungry. Yeah. How do we meet Jesus? Number two, it's got to be more than just being hungry. It's more than that. Can I say number two? They didn't just meet him because they got hungry. They met him because they got honest. Wasn't just hunger, but there had to be some honesty. How do we meet Jesus? You get honest with him. Look at how these boys got honest with Joseph. Would you turn to chapter 42 with me? Chapter 42, they've gotten hungry. You can go back and read that in chapter 41 and the start of verse 42. Or chapter 42, they come down to Egypt trying to find bread. They're hungry. But now they get to Joseph, but they don't know it's Joseph. They're hungry, but now watch them get honest. Come down to verse number 21. Chapter 42, verse 21. Watch what your Bible said here in verse 21. It says this. And they said one to another. This is the brothers. This is the estranged ones. The alienated ones. They said one to another. Watch the honesty. We are very guilty. You know how I know some of you ain't never met Jesus? You ain't never got that honest. You can't meet Jesus without realizing you're guilty. What are we guilty of? Same thing they're guilty of. Do you see what they said they're guilty of? We are very guilty concerning our brother. You know what they said? This is what they were saying. It is our fault and it's our sins and we're guilty. For They thought Joseph was dead. They said we're guilty because killing Joseph. You know what you're guilty of this morning? You're guilty of the death of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at a house full of murderers this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I ain't never killed nobody. Oh, that Bible said, the Bible said in the book yes. of Isaiah that God laid on Jesus Christ the iniquities of us all. The Bible said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him with his stripes were healed. He died for our sins, not for his sins. He didn't have no sins. He was perfect. He died for yours. You know what you are? 
you're guilty this morning. You're guilty of being a sinner. You're guilty of the blood of Jesus. You know why sinners are going to hell? Because they're guilty this morning. God's already passed judgment on you. Guilty of the death of my son. There's only one way to get absolved of that. You got to get on the right side of his son. Yes, sir. On the forgiveness side. Keep reading. Watch the honesty. Watch the honesty. We are verily guilty concerning our brother. Verse 21. In that we saw the anguish of his soul when, we, when he besought us and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. Verse 22. And Reuben answered them saying, Spake I not with you saying, Do not sin against the child and you would not hear. Therefore behold also his blood is required. And they knew not that Joseph understood them for he spake unto them by an interpreter. Not only did we see they got hungry but they got honest. This is the first time. Go read it for yourself. Chapter 37 is when they sell him. They don't get honest till chapter 42. You won't find anywhere between there and here where they admit what they've done and who they are. Business picks up when a sinner not only gets hungry, but then he takes that next step and he gets hungry enough to get honest and say, Oh God, I'm rotten and low down. I'm filthy and sorry to the core. Oh God, I'm a sinner. Save me for Jesus' sake. Business picks up. If you can get honest. Amen. You know why a lot of people won't get saved? They won't get honest. Right. Real Bible preaching when it comes to salvation will make people feel guilty. Please mark this down. Please mark this down and don't ever forget I told you so. If you ain't never felt guilty for being a sinner, you ain't never met Jesus. Exactly. Exactly. All, all, all this, all this sloppy, agape, love, greasy grace preaching that we hear today out there that just, just come to Christ and He'll make your life better. Just come to Jesus and everything, but and feel no guilt for what and who you are. That's not Bible. The Bible said the gospel is this: First Corinthians fifteen. Christ died, but it don't stop there. For our sins. Have you ever felt guilty about the fact that you're a sinner? Oh, preacher, I don't believe you should make people feel guilty. Well, you're going to hell if you ain't never felt guilty. The Bible said, he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Have you ever felt condemned? You say, what, what is... Preacher, explain to me the feeling of condemnation. I'd be glad to. This is the feeling of condemnation. Have you ever done something you know you shouldn't have done and your mom and daddy seen you do it or they got on to you or they sent you to the room and you know you shouldn't get a spanking and you felt the weight of that over your head? Here, let's, let's, let, let me get real with some of y'all because y'all been here and done this. You ever done something against not mom and daddy but the law? <laughs> Went in before the judge and you know... There was nobody going your bail. There was none you could say. You was guilty, condemned, and that dude sitting up there with the gavel was fixing to sling it down on you. Uh-huh. Yeah. That dark cloud over your head, that's condemnation. Yes, sir. Of what? Of guilt. Yes, sir. Have you ever got to the place where you saw that? Not towards mom and daddy. Not towards a judge. But you saw that towards God. Yes, sir. Where you realize it ain't the preacher I've offended. Heaven forbid. It ain't mom and daddy I forbid uh, uh, that I've sinned against God. No. It ain't, it ain't the law that's got me. No. I am condemned by a God that can send me to hell yes, for sir. all of eternity. Yeah. I am condemned under the hand of the sovereign being of the universe that sits on the throne of his glory And as soon as I suck my last breath, and by the way, he holds that breath in his hand. As soon as he draws and says, you done with your last breath, he's going to sentence me to hell for all eternity. Have you ever got to a place where you felt guilty before him? 
See, the Bible says, this is what Jesus said. Everybody want to talk about what Jesus said. Can I tell you what Jesus says this morning? Jesus said, fear not them which can destroy the body, and after that can do no more. He said this, fear him which can destroy both body and soul in hell. You better not be so concerned with mama finding out or daddy finding out. You better not be so concerned with your husband or your wife finding out or the law finding out. What you better be concerned with is God already found you out. And he keeps real good records. And the Bible said one day in Revelation chapter number 21, I saw a great white throne before whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. And I saw the books open and the dead stood before God, small and great. And they were judged out of the things that were written in those books. You say, what's written in the books? Jesus said, every idle word would be judged in the day of judgment. He's got all your words written down. It's deeper than that. He said that which was done in the dark would be shouted on the housetop. He knows all your deeds too. You got it all in them. You ain't hiding from nobody. Have you ever got to a place where you got honest? Thank God, glory. Woo! That's a blessing to my soul. Thank God. I remember that day. I never felt guilt since then like I did then. That's right. I, remember, I remember how guilty I felt before I got saved. Right. Yeah. I remember how guilty I felt. The church I got saved it didn't have three pews. It had two sections of pews and an aisle right down the middle. And I was sitting right about over here where Brother Cody and Brother, Brother Butch is at on the aisle, like right over here on this side. And I'll never forget how guilty I felt. Oh, my soul. Yes, that preacher preached and I felt so guilty. I sat there and I felt like I was going to go to hell from the pew I was sitting on. Oh, I was so guilty. I, and let me say this. Brother Rodney, I was so guilty. I wasn't sitting there saying, well, so-and-so over there is worse than me. Well, that girl over there, I know her and she worse than me. Oh, no, no, no. It got to where it didn't matter about nobody else. I was guilty. Yes, sir. Brother, when I got around the back of that pew and went that way and come back over this way and hit that altar, son, I just got honest with God. I'd been in a church all my life. I'd been around this stuff all my life, but it didn't matter. I got honest with God, and I said, God, you know who I am, and you know what I am. And God, I repent. I'm sorry for what I am, God. I'm talking about that's how you meet Jesus this morning. You got to get hungry. You got to get honest. And lastly, I'm through. I'm, I'm done right here. They not only got hungry and they got honest, but the last thing I find is they got humble. <laughs> they got humble. Say, what do you mean they got humble? Would you look at chapter 44 and verse 14? Chapter 44 and verse number 14. Watch how they got humble. Chapter 44 and verse number 14. Joseph is about to meet him, reveal himself to him in chapter 45. All these things lead up to that. Chapter 45, verse 14. And, or 44, excuse me. Chapter 44, verse 14. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house. Isn't that something? Joseph's house. You had his house this morning. Amen. See, if, you, if you're hungry and, and you're honest... And you can get humble. You're at the right place. Yeah. Come to Joseph's house for, oh, I love this. And Joseph's home. You come to the Lord's house. Good news. For he was yet there. He's home. The bread giver is here. The one that you're guilty before is here. So how do you know he's here? Because I'm here and he's here and that's yes. enough. Where two or three gathered together in my that's name, right. I'd be there in the midst of them. Yes, sir. We got more than two or three gathered in his name this morning. Yes. They came to Joseph's house for he was yet there. And watch here, here, watch how they got humble. And they fell before him on the ground. Yes. So what are they doing? They're getting humble. They're asking for mercy. Yes, sir. Here's the last step to meet Jesus. Here's the last step to meet Jesus. Not just get hungry. Not just get honest. But then you got to get humble enough to where you ask somebody else to do something for you that you can't do for yourself. 
I know, I, 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 know, I know we live in a day of independent men and independent women. And men and women have been this way for millennia. And we are, we are the type of people we ain't going to ask nobody for nothing. I, I'm going to be Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. I'm going to pick myself up by my own bootstraps. I don't need no help. I don't want no help. Oh, if you're going to go to heaven, you need some major help. Yes, sir. Oh, if you're going to go to heaven, you got to have God's help. You say, how do I get that? Get hungry, get honest, and then get humble enough to ask for it. That's right. That's right. Oh, save me for Jesus. Like, you got, can I give you some real good news? I was reading this text just the other day, and I seen something I've never seen before. They tried Brother Danny Russell and paid Joseph multiple times for this bread. They try to. And every time, he gives them their money back. In other words, if you want the bread that he's got, you can't buy it. You can't earn it. It's free. You say, who's it free to? Good news. It's free to the worst of the worst. It was free to the guys that tried to kill him. That tried to get rid of him. You hear this morning, you say, God wouldn't give me eternal life. Jesus wouldn't have nothing to do with me. Oh, yes, he would. You don't got to earn it. You don't got to work for it. You don't got to pay for it. You don't got to tithe for it. All you got to do is get hungry, get honest, and get humble. And he'll just give you all the bread of heaven. You can stand this morning. Help me over here, Esther. I'm glad for the day that I met Jesus. I met him just like Joseph's brothers met Joseph. I realized I was hungry. I just got honest, Brother Jimmy, and said, Lord, this is what I am. This is what I've done. And then I got humble and I called on him and asked and said, Lord, please save an old sinner. Like Cody Zorn. I'm not trying to get you to join our church. This doesn't win place or show in what I'm talking about this morning. I'm not trying to get you to go get dunked in a pool. I'm not trying to get you to give an offer. God forbid. I am trying to introduce you to someone that no one needs to leave earth without being introduced to. Somebody said this, and it's the truth. If you leave this world without knowing or meeting Cody Zorn, you've missed absolutely nothing. You're you're good to leave earth without ever knowing or meeting Cody Zorn. That's nothing. Now listen to what I'm going to tell you. If you leave earth without ever knowing or meeting Jesus, you've missed everything. Like, like you missed the boat. <laughs> missed the whole thing. Your blood will not be on my hands one day. I've told you from the bottom of my heart how to meet Jesus this morning. And I beseech, like Paul said, I beseech you in Christ stead, be reconciled to God. I've done the best I could to try and get you to come meet Jesus. I wish you'd come this morning to meet Him. I wish you'd call on Him. If you'll receive Him, He'll receive you. He'll take you just like you are. Change your life. Do something for you you can't do for yourself. I wonder, are you hungry? Are you tired of what you've been eating all? You longing for something else? You willing to get honest and humble? Meet Jesus. Let's all stand this morning. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Father, I pray that you'd bless this simple little message from the Word of God that I've preached. Lord, I I tried to do exactly what I thought you'd had me to do. And that's lift up Jesus. And that's tell men and women, young men and young women, how they can meet the Lord. God, I can't make them hungry. I pray this morning that you'd start working on their heart, dealing with them. Give them no rest. Give them no comfort in the things they once took comfort in until they come to know you as Savior. Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Nobody's looking around. She's about to sing. I'm going to ask you a question this morning. I don't often do this, 
And I'm going to do it this morning because I feel led to. Say, preacher, I know and I remember the place where I met Jesus. I remember the place where I was when I met Jesus. If you remember that place where you met Jesus and he saved you, would you raise your hand this morning? Just lift it up good and high. God bless you. Hands all over this building this morning. You can put them down. I remember. <laughs> Brother Chad Eagle, I can take you within a foot of the place where I met him. <laughs> this morning, they saw you sitting here. You ain't got a place. You couldn't take me to a place where you ever met Jesus. Say, preacher, that's me. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Raising your hand won't save you. I'm going to ask you to come and meet him. Preacher, I've never met Jesus, but I'm hungry this morning. And I'm willing to get honest and humble this morning. The songwriter said, just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Oh, Lamb of God, I come. Come this morning just like you are. Esther, sing. And if you need to come, now would be a good time. Maybe you know someone that's never met Jesus and you want to bring them to the throne of grace and pray for them. Won't you come pray for them? But if you're lost this morning, we'll be looking for you. Won't you come? Come get me by the hand. I'll be standing right down front. Come to me. Come grab a hold of me. We'll lead you to God.